Good morning. The scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. God is good all the time. God is good. Why don't you turn around and simply say, hey, I know you. Can we do that? Hey, I know you. Hey, I know you guys. I know you. I know you guys. All right. You've never seen any Asian pastors in town, right? Okay, okay, all right. We're blessed to have you guys here. If you are here for the first time, I just want to let you know God loves you this much. God loves you so much, more than anyone else and more than anything else in the world we live today. God loves you, and if you are not here in accident, God is calling your name to be here, to be, uh, uh, to be saved here this place. Can we all pray together? Let, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for calling each one of us as your own. We gather here as a church, as a friends and family in faith and hope and love as well. God, as we continue to listen to the word of God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and uh, uh, take us to a deeper place so that we can learn and grow and we can listen to your voice uh, uh, clearly and carefully. God, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. Do you want me to be a good pastor today? Yes. Yeah, my message will be very, very short, okay? <laughs> All right, so I want to be a good pastor, okay? I choose to be a good pastor, so don't worry about it, okay? Uh, 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 it will be 20 minutes uh, uh, message, but half will be good, okay? 10 minutes, okay? All right, living in 21st century, which we are constantly connected and, and with email and social media, all the news between work and personal life, life has been so hectic and so busy and so many things to do. We're living in 24-7 culture and, and, and all the information uh, 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 overload. Sometimes fake news around us and crazy rumors and all the hustle uh, lifestyle in our journey. There are so many things and distractions holding us back and make, uh, making us so busy in our lives. Where I think you and I will feel the same way. Spiritually speaking, we are seeing and we are experiencing and we are struggling to maintain the heart of the Christianity in our faith. Because there are so many things we need to do. There are so many things we need to uh, 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 deal with and, 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 and go through and, and, and all, all the distractions in the world we live today. When Christians forget about the amazing grace and God's unconditional love shown to, to them through Christ's sacrifice on the cross, an amazing work of Christ uh, through the event of resurrection. 
You know, when we uh, uh, don't pay attention to, to the amazing grace, you receive an, an amazing uh, forgiveness and power and resurrection in your journey. It can cause our heart to grow cold and cold and lose the great gratefulness, passion, purpose, and call and mission we once had. One of the biggest causes I have seen is that when we don't strive to love God, to love others, we don't easily expose ourselves to our human sinful nature and our human tendencies in our journey. When we don't pay attention to daily self-denial and to the path of transformation into Christ-likeness with our Holy Spirit's help, we may lose our fire on heart. We may lose sight of God's love and grace and forgiveness and mercy and compassion and justice in our spiritual journey. So the scripture we are going to talk about and we're going to focus for today is taken from the book of uh, Acts, chapter 1 and verse 8. Let me read a word of God to you. You will receive power when the, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all Judea and all, all Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. What? And then maybe you are here for the first time. Maybe you, you are not religious and you are not Christian and then church is not... Uh, really uh, your things in your life probably you say why you may have a lot of questions in your in your head you may have a lot of questions in your heart as you listen to the message today now I know about the Holy Spirit Pastor Mike's explained but now what now I receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes on me, on me. And what does it mean to receive the power of the Holy Spirit? What, what does it mean to fill with the Holy Spirit? Sounds very complicated. You know, by the way, Holy Spirit is a, is a church language. If you don't come to church, if you're not religious, if you're not Christians, you know, the Holy Spirit is really, really odd and really awkward. It's just church language. I was born in a Christian family and then I've been a Christian for long, probably 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and then 50 years, and 60 years. And then, and then there are two things and two signs you need to see, you can see that you have holy, you have God in your heart. The first one is holy love on your heart. The second one is that you continue to live out your life, reflecting, producing, and bearing the fruit of the Holy Spirit, Spirit, God's Spirit. The holy, the, the, the holy uh, fruit will be love, joy, peace, and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Here are a couple of questions I want to ask you this morning. Do you have holy fire? Which means, do you have God's genuine love for God and genuine love for others in your life? You don't have to say yes or no. You just say in your heart. Let me ask you once again. Do you have God, which means God's love for God and for others in your life? Do you reflect and produce and bear the spiritual fruit in your everyday journey, in your everyday faith journey? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Are you bearing and producing all kinds of you know, uh, uh, spiritual fruit in your life? Do you know what? Our, our word needs right now. Our word needs genuine heart on love, mercy and compassion and justice. Do you know what other people need right now? A real and authentic heart. Do you know what, what we need right now? Loving and forgiving and merciful and gracious heart when we see each other. When we see other people in the community and in the society we belong to. So the scripture says, when you receive the power of the Holy Spirit, which means in my language, okay, my interpretation, when you become a genuine and true and real and passionate, loving and forgiving and gracious and merciful Christian, you know what you have inside of you. You know what comes out of your thought and word and action in your faith journey. You don't have to tell you are Christian. People around you will know that you are Christian. You are a genuine human being by your love, by your holy fire on your heart inside of you. 
the scripture says to that this morning, you will be my witness in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. In my own interpretation, in my own language, you cannot stay at home because you feel so overjoyed and you feel so happy and excited about the good news of Jesus Christ. You believe and you receive so that you will go outside and share what you have with other people. Not only your favorite people in, in favorite place, but also cranky and grumpy and mean and angry. And even, even, even you know, crazy people in all Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This church language, the Holy Spirit, the fire in our heart. We can find one of the most beautiful things Christ has given to each one of us freely. So uh, every day we need to see, we need to examine ourselves. Are we really having a genuine love for God and for others? Am I really, really having a real authentic mercy and compassion when I see other people? Am I really pursuing and having and maintaining to, to be like Christ in my word? in my action, and in my thought as well. Every day we've got to evaluate ourselves. Am I a real Christian? Am I following God's will? Am I, am I not hurting people? Am I not creating any rumors and all the crazy things, evil stuff in the world we live today? And John Wesley reminds each one of us to no harm and to do good and stay in love with God. Here is a question, people. Are we really having holy fire on our heart, on our minds? Are we really expressing, expressing the love of Christ to the world and to the community and to the people who are really against you? Are we really loving God truly and loving others deeply today? Are we just playing the church or Christian? Are we willing to step out into faith, in, in faith and trusting in the power of the Holy Spirit to lead and empower other people, encourage other people, and, and comfort other people, and to give hope to the people? Or are we still doubtful and skeptical and cynical about the heart of the Christianity? Here's my prayer for each one of you, okay? I want to make it very short, okay? We have so many things to do, but I want to, I want to dive into our conclusion, okay? okay? May the Holy Spirit rekindle your heart. May the Holy Spirit rekindle the fire, God's love, God's genuine love and mercy and compassion within us. May the Holy Love lead you, navigate you, guide you, and transform you to be more like Christ in your journey. Church, as we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, God's holy love within us, let us not take it for granted let us humbly invite the fire, God, to lead us and guide us. Let us think about all the things we are doing through our word, through our action, and through our thought as well. May we be filled with a holy love, holy courage, holy hope, holy conviction to proclaim the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing that we do not speak alone, but with the power of the Holy Spirit working within us. Friends, let us continue to remind ourselves of God's call and humbly go forth as God's faithful witnesses. Go outside, love God and love others. Go outside, do everything in love, mercy and compassion. Go outside, build God's kingdom in your community. Go outside and be a hands and feet of our Lord Jesus Christ wherever you go, whatever you do, and whoever you encounter in your journey. May the Holy Spirit continue to dwell within us, renewing our heart on our holy love on our heart, restoring each one of us the joy of salvation and empowering each one of us to go outside, to love God and to love others. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Can we all pray together? Let us pray. God, sometimes we forget about what we have inside of us. Sometimes we 
are proclaiming that we are Christians. We are followers of Jesus Christ. But we are still skeptical and cynical and doubtful in our journey. God, will you please give us your calling and mission and service to love God, to love others. You are asking each one of us to go back to the Jerusalem. Go back to uh, uh, Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the world. That means you are asking each one of us to go back to the school, our work, our community, our relationship, our finance. And we, you are asking each one of us to go back to our community to be the hands and feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are asking each one of us to go and bring the fire within, within our heart. You are asking each one of us to bring the holy love within our heart so that we can go outside to love God deeply, to love others truly as well. God, we need hope. We need love. We need joy in our journey. Help us not to be distracted by all the things going on around us. Help us to fix our eyes on you, focus on your ministry and service in our journey. God, we are the people of love so that we will go outside, love God and love others. We will make a big difference to extend your kingdom here at this place. God will love you. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Hey, why don't you turn around and simply say, bring holy fire. Come on, bring holy fire. Where? In your heart. Okay? Wherever you go, whatever you do, and whoever you encounter, be God's love. Amen.